Good evening, campers. It's me, Kieran. And today we are going to talk about Svetlana's Alexievich's The Unwomanly Face of War. Alexievich might be a name that you're familiar with because she won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 2015. She is Belarusian. She is a Belarusian journalist and is a oral historian. And within her works, all she is doing is taking the oral testimonies of people she has interviewed and then put them into the book. Alexievich's works are at times stark, they are dreary, they are horrifying. And the suffering that she conveys within the written word are predominantly due to the subject matters that she is choosing. And this one being women fighting in World War II. Obviously by exhibiting the most harrowing parts of USSR history. Since 1993, Belarusian state-owned publishing houses won't publish her works. That being said, even privately owned publishing houses within Belarus have only published two of her works, Secondhand Time, which came out in 2013, and Chernobyl Prayer, which is highly influential. And if you have seen Chernobyl, the HBO TV show that I think everyone was watching at one time, the foundations of that script and some of the instances that happened on screen are gleamed from Chernobyl Prayer. As so, Alexievich is known more outside of her own country than in her own country. If you'd like to know more of my thoughts on Chernobyl Prayer, please do consider supporting this channel. The link down below is the coffee link. From that, you will get coffee-only reviews. You will have access to the Booker Boy Book Club, where we not only have a book club now, but we have a monthly film club where we're looking at translated works, we're looking at classics. I really want to make it a place where we broaden our horizons. Thank you to everyone who has supported so far, and again, link down below. The unwomanly face of war. Well, we're talking about women, as I've said, and within Britain, women within Second World War has been lauded. We've seen the propaganda, we've studied it if you're in Britain. There's a message that it was great for women to join the war and in the USSR that propaganda was happening as well as such for the Red Army over a million women signed up but rather than working in the factories these women were amongst men these women had to learn how to shoot guns they had to learn how to shoot down airplanes they had to learn how to survive in the trenches they had to see some horrendous things. Some of those women were still carrying their babies on their backs during the absolute carnage. The monstrous thing about war is that it's a great leveller. The person shooting at you doesn't care about your gender. They don't care who you are. If the bullet is coming towards you, you're going to get hit. Alexievich and the women that she interviewed, over 200 of them, emphasise that they witnessed the same things as men. Nothing was easy for them. The women's testimonies are unflinching. In fact, only towards the beginning of the book does Alexievich advise us that one woman said she was never going to talk to her because why would she want to relive and re-remember and reimagine? what she went through. But for the other people, what they're talking about will 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 claw its way into you. I couldn't imagine having a newborn child and having to drown it in a puddle in front of me because if the baby cried, I would probably be killed along with the rest of the troops. I couldn't imagine going down a street that is so littered with bodies that horses that generally move away have no way but to crunch on the skulls of dead soldiers. I can't imagine having a man being blown up, his arm dangling out of its socket, and then gnawing the sinews and seeing him get back up into the fray. This book is not for the light-hearted, but if you're reading a book about World War II on the battlefront. 
you should you should expect to be absolutely wrenched. I would like to be able to say that there was no hope and there was no glory, but there is. There is hope. There is glory. These young women who are like latest early 20s, when they sign up into war, they're ecstatic. They're, they're filled with, you know, I'm going to fight for my country. I wouldn't say they're jovial, but they're enthusiastic. Very quickly within these women's stories, it's it's stark, that the change is stark in what they start to talk about. The entire shift, the entire reality dawns on them. If you've not read this book or struggling of what I'm trying to express, let's just look at the front cover of this. So this lady, she's in her military outfit. She's laden with medals. But she doesn't look happy about it. There's something going on here. There's that, yes, she's earned them, but does she want them? Do you need to see a ship full of soldiers so bloated in decay to warrant wearing a medal? For some people, the answer will be yes. For some people, the answer will undoubtedly be yes. And if you think that does entitle you to a medal, you are completely allowed to have that opinion. Please, by no means am I a absolute pacifist and I'm not against the military. I actually was going to sign up two years ago, but things changed. Hey, but I'm going to read you a section from The Unwomanly Face of War. This is like the worst thing in the world, but it's just going to give you an understanding of how emotionless this is. This is from Nurse Maria Selestrovsna. The most unbearable thing for me was the amputations. They often amputated so high up that they'd cut off the whole leg. And I could barely hold it, barely carry it to the basin. I remember they were heavy. I could take it quietly so that the wounded man wouldn't hear and carry it like a baby, a small baby, especially if it was a high amputation above the knee. I couldn't get used to it. Under anesthesia, the wounded men would groan or curse. Well-rounded Russian curses. I was always bloody. Blood is dark red. Very dark. I wrote nothing to Mama about it. I wrote her that everything was fine and I had warm clothes and boots. She sent three of us to the front. It was hard for her. And these women didn't really talk about these experiences. They kept them to themselves. Alexeyevich has almost given them a mode, a vesicle, a means to get things off their chest. But at the start of each section, Alexeyevich talks almost to herself. She's wondering the process of what these women must be going through in talking to her and reliving these moments. Alexeyevich was born in 1948, so she has no recollection of the war, but undoubtedly her family have had the trauma. She's grown up knowing about it, but she hasn't experienced it firsthand. And one thing that Alexievich does throughout this novel to highlight the limitation of her oral history is that she says, I cannot record the eyes of these women. I cannot record their voices breaking. I cannot record the struggle. I cannot record the emotion. For Alexeyevich, she is just there more as a transcriber. She's the one collating and collecting and polishing off some of the edges it's so much that she makes it more concise. And by that, I don't mean that anything is fictionalised. This is verbatim from the transcript, from the conversation. This is a tremendous book because not only do you have the oblique violence during the war, but also how the women deal after the war. 
even though the women are again within their 20s when all of this is happening, coming back to their hometowns afterwards, men didn't want the women who were fighting by them. Instead, the men were looking for women who hadn't been part of the war. They wanted something soft. They wanted something idyllic to come back to. The women soldiers are left unkissed coming home. They come home on their own. But no one's really there to greet them, apart from their family members, if at all they survived. I could just read for the book and give you examples. That's kind of the only way you can articulate around this. It's hard. It's a hard read. It's not something to go into lightly. It's not something that you're going to come away with enjoying yourself. But it'll open up a huge gap in what you thought. And that's really the importance of these types of books. And as such, The Unwomanly Face of War by Svetlana Alexievich, I would give an 8 out of 10. I don't really read much non-fiction, but I do seem to this year to be reading more from people during and after the USSR, which always seems to floor me, always seems to open up another hole that I, I didn't know about. And we're going to keep learning. But yes, please do check out The Unwomanly Face of War. And if you would like to see my review on Chernobyl, pray link down below to coffee. And I will see you next time. Bye!